Welcome to the wonderful world of extreme cinema. We have exciting home videos of depraved serial killers. We have the depravity of old men taking out their fantasies on kidnapped men and women. We have a movie where a man is literally drugged into f***ing his own son. Then we also have movies focusing on the deepest exploration of the most unique, unique of fetishisms. <laughs> we have the eroticism of piss, poop, and puke. The three f***ing peas. What am I talking about? I am talking about Lucifer Valentine, a demented, sick monstrosity of a shit stain on the ass crack of the earth. This man has had allegations thrown against him as far as grooming, sexual relations with a minor, drug abuse, and much, much more. Watch my video here for more information on that lovely topic. But with this being stated, what movies has he been known for actually making? Well, he has six films and one short film, but is this a situation where we should separate the art from the artist? No! These films are not art in the slightest, no matter what fucking message you try to slap onto them. These films have no moral or innate message worth describing in elaborate detail, but for those who don't know, Lucifer Valentine's filmography starts with slaughtered vomit dolls, then going into regurgitated sacrifice, slow Torture Puke Chamber, A Perfect Child of Satan, Black Metal Veins, Black Mass of the Nazi Sex Wizard, and then The Angela Chapters, which, oh god, oh god. <laughs> With titles like that, it's no surprise to see that these movies have the reputations that they do. Well, without further ado, let's talk about each one of them, and why. Break, just talk about why I'm telling you, do not watch the Lucifer Valentine filmography. Released in 2006 and starring Amara Levy, this so-called film centers around a bulimic prostitute. And if you think that's heavy-handed, j just you wait. <laughs> Named Angela, and she begins to have hallucinations about herself and her friends being subjected to horrifying situations involving murder, dismemberment, and bodily fluids. While all of this goes on, she has flashes of her childhood through some home videotapes of herself as a child as Angela pledges her allegiance to Satan and begins her descent into hell. Angela eventually, by the end of the movie, uninstalls life off of her consciousness and she supposedly descends to hell. Throughout the movie, there are various scenes of depravity and disgusting predicaments. We see someone getting their eyes gouged out, a dismembered arm being used to play the guitar and force someone to throw up. That person then continuously drinks and throws up and drinks again and throws up again. We literally see someone getting their brain ripped out of their fucking skull and then that person proceeds to throw up into the skull. Like, I can't make this shit up. I just can't. Then we get the scene, of course, where Angela uninstalls life in a bathtub, which, whoop de fucking do. Now imagine that with horrid sound design meant to bleed your ears, terrible editing that would give anyone with epileptic seizures a one-way trip to the morgue, and enough real usage of bodily fluid that would make your local nurse and janitor consider retirement. There's more. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot more. There's throwing up of blood, real-life sex between Amara Levy and the cameraman who I believe is Lucifer Valentine, and the actual usage of Amara Levy's real-life childhood footage in this film. All of this put together is what I truly consider to be one of the most revolting movies I've ever seen, and I truly cannot recommend this movie to anyone. I have seen some praise come out for this movie as a deep exploration into the psyche of its main character as she purges everything out of her body as a declaration of love for Satan, but I don't know. But here's the thing. Most of this wasn't intended with the making of slaughtered vomit dolls. Literally, this movie was formed out of the abusive relationship Lucifer Valentine had with Amara Levy, seeing as they had worked together prior. Well, Lucifer Valentine, underneath his real name, which I was able to confirm through this source, had worked in the adult film industry and had a production company named Sweet Productions. This film is called Sweet. 
Jake Bus Nuts, Amara and Dawn, which came out in 2003, three years before the release of Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. How do I know this information is good? Well, it comes from Canada's very own fucking copyright database. So with this being said, we know that they previously had worked together on adult films. So when Lucifer stated that their relationship formed out of a sexual dominance and submissive role play, and he recorded all of their encounters, I 100% believe that this is how Slaughtered Vomit Dolls was made. It's not some deep, hardcore look into the depths of hell. It's an amalgamation of home video clips spliced in with gore and bodily fluids to create a half-cocked message and sound deeper than it truly is. I can see the intent with the movie, more so than the rest, but the message is so thinly veiled it's basically see-through or not even present. The film is ugly, the sound design too messy, and overall left me feeling really empty inside. Not because it sucked the life out of me harder than your local street prostitute, but rather it never managed to get anything started within me to begin with. Regardless, that didn't stop the movie from being loved by many and starting the franchise and genre of vomit gore. Because, as we already stated, this is just the beginning. Probably my least favorite of the original three. Um, Regurgitated Sacrifice was released in 2008, starring Amara Levy and the Soska sisters of American Mary and Rabbit fame. This film follows Amara Levy's continued descent into hell as she discovers new people that are being tortured around her. Or at least that's what I took out of it. This is seriously one of the most boring movies one could ever watch with the same problems as Slaughtered Vomit Dolls along with an even more complicated narrative, repetitive imagery, and horrid special effects. Like literally the special effects in Tumbling Doll of Flesh and Flowers of Flesh and Blood are significantly better than this movie. The reason why I bring up issues like the more complicated narrative is because we are now dealing with the idea that there are multiple Angelas, all of them connected as devoted followers of Satan. This one is as exciting to see as a mime doing a performance for you if you were fucking blind. Seriously, the only thing of note in this movie is that the Soska sisters are in half of this movie and half of this movie takes place inside of this white room where they do a whole bunch of shit in it. You got BDSM, stitching a woman's privates up, decapitation, throwing up into various things like the head, and an octopus that this fat guy wears as a crown, and then a Mary Levy takes the cameraman's red hot chili pepper and gives it a sucking so good he literally, he literally comes blood. What the f***? The ending of this movie shows this scene spliced with what Lucifer Valentine says is real footage of his sister Cinderella dead in the bathtub the night that she took her own life. Now whether this is true is completely up for debate. First off, I just want to say I don't buy into this, like, but who truly knows? Regardless, regurgitated sacrifice is just not worth anybody's time or money, more so than even the first movie in this series. But this didn't stop from the third movie entering into production, with 2010's Slow Torture Puke Chamber. Uh, I, I don't have much to say on this one, I really don't, but uh, this third one is just more of the same from Lucifer Valentine. This one is, I guess, a prequel showing the events that led up to Slaughtered Vomit Dolls? I would have never been able to guess that, but it does serve as a stepping stone to the events that take place in Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. This one is without a doubt the most boring of the three, with no real scene worth highlighting until a pregnant lady gets her fetus ripped out, the baby is placed in a blender, and then this Peter Griffin with a mustache look-alike proceeds to do what else? Drink it and throw it up. This one is easily the most boring of the three, and it's the one I remember least. It's so bland and forgettable that the only thing shocking about this film is its inability to repulse me or the audience. Thankfully, this next movie that I have to talk about is not related to the Slaughtered Vomit Dolls name or franchise, more or less as a reference to a phrase said back in Regurgitated Sacrifice. This next film happens to be my favorite out of the Lucifer Valentine filmography, and it's still f***ing awful. Now this one is one of the ones I have the most to say about. 
A Perfect Child of Satan came out in 2012 and is one of the only movies where I feel Lucifer Valentine made any sort of attempt to get the audience to feel something else other than disgust. This short follows a woman named Sarah, played by Chelsea Chainsaw, who is talking to some random guy that she met online. This guy is the man of her dreams and she is nervously waiting out the days until she meets him. She is a prostitute in the meantime, but despite all that, she still wants a guy that'll treat her nice. Well, the day finally comes where she goes to a motel room to meet her mystery man. And... This is where he violently assaults and kills her. The things that I can actually appreciate about this short is the actual glimpse of character development where Sarah is a hopeless romantic guided down a wrong path right into the hands of a violent man. We actually get the chance to know this character, so when her death happens, it sticks a better landing than any of the other movies in his filmography. As she is being violently assaulted, flashes of their text messages play on the screen showing how fooled she was by this individual. It's a cautionary tale of the horrors that can happen through online dating, though through the ends of Lucifer Valentine. But with all of this, the movie is still not well made, horrid sound design, and borders the realm of potentially being more real than fake. Not that she was actually sexually assaulted and killed, but the slaps, choking, and various other things that happened seem very real. As a man who is currently engaged to a wonderful woman, I cannot condone this behavior of any sort. With the Lucifer Valentine edginess being a drag on every project latched onto him, I feel this one is the one where his presence is the least felt. However, it still is miserable to get through. For doing the bare minimum, I can't give this movie higher than a 2 out of 10. It's a shame, really, because a movie about online dating and the horrors of stranger danger, especially being portrayed in a very visceral way, I don't see done that often. However, in this case, it still isn't enough to save this film. But with that being said, this is not the most unique film in this for Valentine's filmography. That title goes to 2012's And 2012's Black Metal Veins is a really weird film. Whereas the other films in his filmography would land somewhere in tiers 3 and 4 of the disturbing movie Iceberg, this one specifically lands in tier 6 with the shockumentaries. Now, why is this? What if I told you this movie is about heroin addicts as they deal with their heroin addiction and the downfall of their lifestyles? Well, based on what I just said, you would expect this one to be one of the most real have some authenticity to it. Give me something to actually appreciate about this film, especially when considering what goes on in the film. Literally, we have real drug usage in this film, primarily black tar heroin and crack cocaine, but then we also got the deaths of individuals involved in the film, one of them dying from a drug deal gone bad and another one dying of an overdose on screen. However, this is not all as what it seems. As a matter of fact, though the drug use may perhaps be real, the deaths that take place within the film are all fake, even the overdose where our Sir Lucifer Valentine stretches the truth for the sake of his so-called documentary. The reason why this is so important to mention is that now we can't help but question the authenticity of any of the things that happen within the film. Like, should we believe the individuals when we hear them discuss their sad backstories that often involve physical and sexual abuse? Well, no, you shouldn't. Because Raven and Autumn Misery, who are both in this one, show up in the Angela chapters. Why this matters is because Raven is the woman who overdoses and dies within this movie, but shows up alive eight years later? More on that film later, but seriously. Many people who have dealt with heroin addictions have stated that many of the situations in this film feel very authentic, which is great for them, I guess. But for me, I have a hard time taking everything seriously. I can't tell whether their discussions of abandonment, self-harm tendencies, and various forms of abuse are to be taken seriously. Like literally, this is a film called Black Metal Veins, which could be seen as a play into the black tar heroin that is shot up throughout the film, but no. In the true Lucifer Valentine fashion, the title actually has to deal with Brad's hobby of being 
in the black metal music scene. He states that it has nothing to do with playing live or being raw in your performances, nor does it have to do with being a part of some movement of some kind. What it has to do with is one thing, Satanism, which just feels so damn tryhard and makes me think that it has Lucifer Valentine's greasy fingers all over this film. This film and A Perfect Child of Satan are the only Lucifer Valentine movies I can have any appreciation for and they'd both be a 2 out of 10 for either being inauthentic or just horridly made. But speaking of horridly made films, none can compare to these next two movies, starting off with... Ah, in the wonderful year of 2015, where we have songs like Hello, Lean On, How Deep Is Your Love, Trap Queen Taking Over the Radio, we have Black Mass of the Nazi Sex Wizard in the underground movie scene. Yeah. What in the flying fuck? I fucking hate this movie so much. Same with the next one, but I hate this one with every single atom that my cesspool of calories holds. This is a supposed Christmas movie with flashes of older footage of the new Angela Aberdeen on top of cartoons sprinkled within the mix, which all adds up to literally nothing. This film is trying its best to recapture what the first movie was, with our new Angela Aberdeen not played by Amara Levy. Thank God for that and her making it out of this godforsaken franchise, because at the time, she had three children. It would just be two years after the release of this movie that the real-life Brandy Petrie would be murdered during a drug deal gone wrong. This genuinely feels like an attempt to make the first film without any of the intent or edge that the first film had, and that is saying something. The film does have some really gnarly scenes where the title is written in blood and then washed off with puke, and the insides of someone being ripped out through their cut open breast. But with all this comes nothing worthwhile. It is a genuine piece of trash that tries desperately to make a Vomit Gore 4 seem necessary by placing a crown on the new Angela's head and putting her back in the bathtub that she died in, almost as a way of saying, hey remember? And it all adds up to a completely pointless setting in 1990s Christmas with Nazi imagery that is seemingly spliced in for no reason. As the new Angela dies, Nazi imagery is edited throughout and it culminates in an empty, pointless feeling. Why this series exists is beyond me, but even more so, why does this exist? I can't answer that one, nor can I ever answer this next one as to why Lucifer Valentine's next film exists, because it just so happens to be his absolute worst. I hate this film. This is absolutely the worst film in Lucifer Valentine's catalog. Not only is it more of the same and just completely boring, I get to have three fucking hours of this film. I get to have three hours of it! <laughs> Why is this one so long? It has to do with the fact that there are six chapters in this fucking movie. Six chapters of this shit. Jesus H. Christ. I've already sat through six fucking films in his filmography, and now I gotta sit through a seventh that is essentially another fucking six of them. Whatever the hell anyways, the movie begins with chapter one, Raised in Filth. This one follows a woman here named Candace. She has been through the ringworks living in poverty with only three dollars to her name. She discusses her backstory, how she was raised in filth because she lived with her grandma and her grandma's 20 cats. One of the cats was found dead with maggots eating the corpse and the maggots even made its way into her breakfast one day. She describes how she was pregnant and the father took off before she ever got the chance to tell him. And while this is discussed, flashes of Candace in a BDSM-like scenario plays on screen. This segment ends at about 17 minutes in, where it then cuts to chapter 2. I'm a perfect 10. In this segment, we see what those flashes were in chapter 1, the BDSM and the abuse segment. Candace is stripped and slapped over and over again, but not before Lucifer Valentine is telling her that she has a safe word and that he is genuinely always concerned for her safety and her safety is the most important factor. Yeah, whatever. It's very hard for me to consider that 
her safety is of the utmost concern to him because she's literally asking him to give her a perfect 10 for a slap. She then later speaks about animals and how desperate she is for love and money, but this segment continues with Candace being strangled and then being strangled some more with her underwear. It then ends with Candace talking about how much she needs money and is willing to do anything for it, even, even eating her own shit. Even eating her own shit. <sighs> love humanity. I love, I love humanity so much. Then we transition into chapter three, the human rattlesnake. Okay. I've already talked about this one somewhat in the uh, allegations of Lucifer Valentine true crime reviews video I did. So I'm going to keep this one brief because I don't want to talk about it. Even if it is real, whether it is real or it's not, I don't know if it's real. People have told me it is. People have told me it isn't. I'm inclined to think it's not because it's for Valentine likes fake and shit. But at the same time, you never know because this one is supposed to be real. So all I got to say is I'm going to keep this one short. Chapter 3, The Human Rattlesnake, begins at around the 48 minute mark. This one I am going to keep brief because this one is the one of the worst things I've ever seen. All I'll say is that Candace suffers from epileptic seizures and Lucifer Valentine play, places baby rattles on her limbs. She then gets a flashlight strobed in her face causing a seizure and Lucifer watches her convulse on the bed. There's then more abuse of Candace and it then cuts to chapter 4, Sorcerer of Piss, at around an hour and 8 minutes in. This fucking one obviously involves piss, but um... They briefly discuss John Benet Ramsey's murder, which, for context reasons, is the true crime case of a six year old girl who was found strangled to death in her parents' basement. Oh, and also is on Christmas Day. I just felt the need to say that real quick. I don't, I don't know why, but I did. This lady has scars from self harm and even crucifix scars on her as well. She then pledges to be a slave to Lucifer Valentine. She literally is whipped over and over again as she tells her story of why she dove into cutting herself to begin with. But then, god damn it, she then pisses into a mason jar over and over again as the camera pans in on her lady bits, then cuts to her getting whipped some more. Yeah, it pans in on her lady bits, and then she... You get the idea. It then cuts to her getting whipped some more, starting to whip her until she pukes. With another hour and 24 minutes left, we hop into Chapter 5, Angel Abuse, which stars the actress Baby Cat, which to specify is actually of legal age. I know I kind of talk about how young she does look in this one, uh, in this video here. Um, I know I know I briefly talk about how she does look so young, but I guess she is of legal age, so... I just felt the need to specify that because there were a lot of comments from the other um, Lucifer Valentine video I did on this whole thing. And Baby Cat uh, has a brief snippet, has one of her pictures in there. So I have to specify that, yes, she is of legal age. Anyways, the segment begins with the cameraman walking towards her with a hammer as the saying, Dolly is broken, is written on the wall in blood. This one is the most interesting one out of all these chapters as it feels the most real. Baby Cat was sending in videos of Lucifer Valentine for him to put in the film. Videos of herself nude and slapping herself for him. This is what makes it so weird is she does look incredibly young. Like I can't deny it. she looks really young, but at the same time, I guess she is of legal age. Otherwise, what Lucifer Valentine did is illegal and I just committed a felony. Fucking great. Awesome. It's strange, though, that she was sending stuff to him, whether it be in her bedroom, a bathroom, or in front of a mirror. She would send him similar stuff. While this is going on, footage of herself throwing up and being slapped by the cameraman are spliced in between her segments that she filmed on her own. She's getting choked and whipped with a belt by Lucifer Valentine. Seriously, some of these pictures look so young for her, and honestly... I want to know when her birthday is. She then talks about the loss of her mother and how her mom would always ask her what happened on Baywatch and that she doesn't remember much of her mom. Baby Cat discusses her deadbeat mother and how she was essentially raised by her sister. Cut to Autumn Misery from Black Metal Veins who's discussing her diagnoses and the medications to treat those issues. 
where she discusses her mom after that, and her issues are as a result of her mom. But then... But then... Fucking Raven shows up. Oh my god. Raven, who supposedly died in black metal veins, shows up. I can't make this up, but... Let's continue. They both talk about their drug usage because of their issues and using the drugs to cope. They talk about how some of them have been violent for drugs or while on them. They all talk about their issues with their moms or being a mom, as Baby Cat throwing up is now edited into the mix. But Baby Cat then shaves her head and meets with Raven and Autumn separately as they show her how to do drugs properly and how to be pimped out as a prostitute. Jesus fucking Christ. Christ, people. The title Angel Abuse could be seen as Baby Cat who is young, naive, and innocent, getting abused and brought into this sick world, or it could be a reference to the angel dust she snorts at times and the abuse of the drug that follows. But then, Raven places a strap on, on, and he <laughs> Raven vomits on her, and then she drinks the vomit and vomits it up. She suffocates herself with a bag and cuts an X in her forehead with a razor. It cuts back to her strangling herself with a yellow rope from earlier, and then the words Angel Abuse get written with lipstick on her torso. Flashes of baby cat selfies to loose her valentine are then edited together in a fast motion. It then ends, and boom. With 18 minutes left to spare comes Chapter 6, I Need a Teacher. In this one, we get the supposed con- in this one, we get the supposed confirmation that she is in fact 23 years old by holding up her license, which is blurred. But all this one is, is a cam girl-like segment where Baby Cat does ma masturbation, pleases herself, as archival footage of Amara Levy is spliced into the mix. Three years after Amara Levy died. I don't even understand the reason why this footage is in the film. I just don't. I feel like it's a really shoehorned way to try to cash in on the slaughtered vomit doll's name or the vomit gore name. But the movie ends with it stating that it stars Baby Cat and Tamara Levy. All I need to say is this. This movie is dreadful. It is horrid. Um, for the longest time, I have stated Manos the Hands of Fate is the worst movie I have ever seen. And then over time, I saw Melancholy Durangle, or The Angel's Melancholy. Which, in retrospect, I would have said that was the worst movie I've ever seen. But then I watched The Angela Chapters. The Angela Chapters is now currently the worst fucking movie I have ever seen in my entire life. This movie is an insufferable shit stain on your underwear that just won't come out. The blatant disrespect of Brandy Petrie three years after her death and the fact that Lucifer Valentine would stoop to this low is completely baffling to me. But at the same time, I did a whole video about the allegations against him, so I really shouldn't be shocked. I am disappointed in him, and I am disappointed in the fans who support him. After all of the allegations that have come out, I want to state right now that I 100% believe the allegations, especially after knowing how he likes to manipulate and exploit the abuse or exploit the abuse of his actresses for his films. Lucifer Valentine, you are the worst and I hate you. Do not watch the Lucifer Valentine filmography. Not only because they suck, but because Lucifer Valentine doesn't deserve your time, your recognition, or your energy spent on any of his creations. Lucifer, you're a waste of skin. And just know that your actions are finally catching up to you. You can't hide forever.